My name is Benjamin. Um, I come from England, from London, and I'm 27 years old. I'm studying theology in Rome, and I hope to become a priest uh, soon enough. For me, Mary has always been my mother. She's always um, she's always been present in all the in all, in all the the path I've had, all the moments when I would have separated myself from Christ. She's been there to kind of nudge me back on the on the road. I pray the Rosary because I believe that it is a prayer which is very special. It's not just a devotional prayer, but through the Rosary we are able to contemplate the mysteries of the life of Christ, but magnified, as if by a magnifying glass. Our, Our Lady is a magnifying glass for us in some ways. She opens herself up to Him completely, and by that she magnifies Him to us and makes Him, him greater. And uh, through the Rosary, I can see you know, why these mysteries of the life of Christ are important to me how they relate to me, what he's trying to tell me in this moment, how to get through the situation, etc. So I think it's really important to pray the rosary. My favorite mysteries are the wedding feast of Cana and the resurrection. Uh, I think they're both very united. In the wedding feast of Cana, you know, he works the miracle on the interior of changing the water of monotony, daily life, into uh, the wine of joy of the new covenant. But he does it through the, the Virgin Mary. She's the one who pushes him and encourages him to, to work the miracle. And I feel called to the priesthood. I see myself as the servant in that scene who brings the water. Because by my little, my few efforts, I would witness the miracle that Christ works in people. And I think that's something very special. And in the gospel, that, um, that scene comes out on, it says, on the third day, there was a wedding at Cain and Galilee. And that on the third day is obviously a, a reference to the resurrection. Because it's in the resurrection where Jesus uh, vivifies, you know, gives life to all of creation again. And that's where, you know, that's where the Christian life has its fountain its, and its um, summit. The rosary takes 20 minutes to pray. Any normal day you can spend 20 minutes talking to someone about nothing or you can just watch the TV for an hour or more. So praying the rosary, you know, there is time for it. And if there, you know, really you can't find time one day because everything is so difficult. You're not gonna die if you just sleep, have a, you know, pray the rosary and then go to bed 20 minutes later is fine. So not having time isn't a real reason for not praying the rosary. I'd say that if someone um, says they're bored when they're praying the rosary, then it means that they don't know how to listen. Because in the rosary we're listening to Jesus who's talking to our soul in the mysteries of his life through the Virgin Mary. It's something you have to learn how to do. Because Jesus isn't uh, a superhero like Spider-Man or something. He's not gonna come out in a blockbuster with special effects and music. You know, you've got to learn to listen and, uh, and understand. And he does talk to you. And a lot of the things you probably you need in your life, which you, you don't realize, you, you know, you, know, you realize there's something missing, um, it's because we don't know how to listen to Christ and how to and how to how to understand him. It's something well worth persevering in. And another thing is if we don't know how to pray, it, we might not just not know how to listen to others either. You know, if you can't listen to God who speaks on the inside, it might not be easy for you to listen to someone who speaks to you and who's, who's next to you and talking to you about. One time, I was uh, I was talking to a man who had 
had problems, he had difficulties, and uh, I had to go. I didn't have time to talk to him because I had to, to, to leave on a long journey. You know, it wasn't an easy thing. After a couple of minutes, you know, I really understood that he actually did have a difficult situation. I, I, I told him, you know, I'll pray for you. You've got to you pray for yourself as well, you know, learn to, to trust in Christ and speak to a priest as well. And I gave him a miraculous medal. And he was really surprised when he saw the miraculous medal. He said that the, the version the, of the miraculous medal had been um, pursuing him all his life and he'd consecrated himself to the devil. And he showed me he had a, a ring which was made out of pure gold. It was really thick. Uh, later he told me it cost him $7,000 actually. And uh, had insignia, satan satanic insignia all over it. He said something like, this is my consecration ring or something. And he showed me it. And so I said, oh yeah? Leo, can I see it? And he gave it to me, put it in the palm of my hand. And you know, look, it, was, it was real, it really, it was the real deal. And, uh, and I closed my hand over it and I said, give it to me. And he had the miraculous medal and I had his ring. And I think that in that moment, it was the presence of Our Lady through the Miraculous Medal that helped him detach himself from, from, the, from the devil. And he gave it to me, he said, yes, take it, take it. It was difficult for him, but he did it. And uh, I disposed of the ring immediately, of course. And, um, and it's changed his life. And giving up Miraculous Medals, or other sacramentals as well, rosaries, scapulars, you know, I've seen people who have had deep interior moments where, where our Lord or Our Lady have touched them. And those are just the, one, the things that I've seen, you know, what people actually have lived afterwards, you know, I don't know. But I think that Our Lady works a lot through these things and we should just have a simple faith in them and, and don't be afraid of just being generous. People need Our Lord and people need Our Lady.